Um, what was your reaction when you heard that Jason Witten was leaving the Monday Night Football booth after just one year? I was very uh, surprised and curious. Surprised because that's a huge job to yeah. leave and an even bigger job to take leaving the NFL. So you would think that that's something you're very, very committed to. Um, and curious because I don't know what to expect from him after a year off from football, which I, I think everyone is just assuming he's going to pick up where he left off. And mentally and as far as his, uh, you know, teaching abilities and locker room guy and all that, I'm sure it will be seamless. But the football field stuff is what I'm not sure about. Yeah, you, you don't get faster. Everybody else does. A year away after having 63 catches but not looking great doing it. Um, I, you know, like it's, it's going to be fascinating. Listen, I agree with you. I was surprised. And look, none of us are blind, deaf, or dumb. Oftentimes, people who have sat in an analyst chair are a little bit more reasonable in terms of their analysis of it. It's a hard gig. It's a hard gig to do, especially when you're judged by the entire world. You're the only game. You're a standalone game. Whereas if you're on a Sunday at a 1 o'clock or a 4 o'clock game, you know, even if there's some other big guys on it, there's parts of the country that don't hear you. Everyone hears. And it's Monday Night Football, which has been synonymous with the very top in the field. Whether or not they, they don't get the Super Bowl, they only get one playoff game. But the fact is, being a standalone game, everyone parses every word you have. And when you're compared against your former quarterback, Tony Romo, it's really hard because everybody loves Romo. A and look, there's flaws in the hiring for ESPN. They had a completely green crew. Like, as much as everyone loves Booker McFarlane, he never called NFL games. As much as everybody loves Joe Testator, he never called an NFL game. So there's no NFL chops, no equity with the audience. It was hard, and he rightfully got some criticism. But it makes no sense to leave one of those four chairs, right? It, it's why I sat here in this very chair before, uh, before Cowherd ever got a chance to comment on it when Tony Romo left playing in the NFL to be the lead broadcaster, lead color man, analyst for CBS. They said he's not going back. Because once you have that chair, <laughs> you're, at the, you're at the top of the mountain. You didn't have to climb. You didn't have to fight. You didn't have to wait for a guy to retire. You leapfrogged a bunch of steps. You didn't have to do ESPN News overnight, right? You didn't have to call NFL Europe. You didn't have to slog it out. You got one of those big chairs, never give it up. So on many levels, it makes no sense. They were going to try and figure out a way to make it work. He would have been better as time went on. They likely would have moved Burger McFarland into the booth, and that would have been a good three-man booth, and we would have started out, oh, okay, you know what, I, I, I understand the Witten thing. He would have gotten better. Our expectations would have lessened. They would have grown together as a, as a crew. He had a four-year con. It makes no sense to leave one of the four big chairs covering the biggest professional sport in the industry to go back to playing tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Unless, hey, why did Josh McDaniels change his mind from the Indianapolis Colts where he might or might not have had Andrew Luck? Remember at the time, we didn't know about Andrew Luck's shoulders. Why would he go back to the New England Patriots? Do we really believe it's because Bill Belichick was going to open up his vault of knowledge? Or was it a wink deal where he's the guy? It, it feels like we're all missing that if you just look in a, in, a, in a vacuum, do you leave Monday Night Football to go back to the Dallas Cowboys with a one-year deal, three and a half million, where you're making more money with an easier job that's a 30-year? Look, being a broadcaster on Monday Night Football or in any of these – that's it's like it's like a lifetime appointment. It's like being a federal judge. <laughs> Th those guys, they he might not have had Monday Night Football after four years, but it's not like they were going to fire him. And if he decided, if if they mutually decided to part ways, there were other networks that would have hired him to do maybe lesser games. Why would you walk away from what feels like a layup? You know, eighteen week, eighteen month, uh, seventeen Monday, not even seventeen Mondays. Right, but 17 games plus one playoff game, why would you walk away? And then you start to think about it. Jason Garrett last week was not renewed. There was no extension on his contract. Heck, if you go back and you listen to Jerry Jones and his son, they have said, we're in win-now mode. 
We're kind of in prove it mode. And then you start to think, wait a second, Kellen Moore is the new offensive coordinator. He's been with the Dallas Cowboys with Jason Witten. John Kitna is the quarterback coach. He's been the backup quarterback with Jason Witten. Rob Marinelli's doing a good job with that defense. All they'd have to do is change out head coach and tight end. And remember, Jerry only hires Jerry's guys. Right? He's hired outsiders in the past. Bill, Bill Parcells did a good job, but they didn't get along with it. Jimmy Johnson, of course, works here, did the best job. But Jerry wants Jerry's guys. Cowboys. I want a cowboy to be the cowboy head coach. That's what he's got now. And, and this is part of what Jerry has done previously. If you go back to the 13, 2013 season, they were 8-8. Eight and eight. They missed the playoffs for the third straight year under Jason Garrett. Go back and look. Their offensive coordinator was Bill Callahan. Their defensive coordinator was Monty Kiffin. Even their special teams coach, all three coordinators, had previously worked for John Gruden. When John Gruden was a head coach in Oakland, Bill Callahan, or in Tampa, Monty Kiffin. And what he put in place was, hey, look, if this Jason Garrett thing doesn't work out, I'll just slide John Gruden in there. He's already got his guys in place. Why would, why would you leave one of the top four positions? The, the chair is analyst for Monday Night Football. It's Danny Don Meredith all the way to John Madden to John Gruden. Why would you leave that to go back to the Cowboys? Now, look, I actually think you're more valuable to a team if, like John Gruden, you're going and watching everybody else practice. You're talking to every other coach. You understand the entirety of the league. But being a plant for ownership, for the general manager, for, to be in the future head coach, already having kind of the deity status that he has in Dallas, the only thing that would make sense to leave a Supreme Court justice-like lifetime appointment of being a color analyst with no chops at all, Monday Night Football, in the second year of a four-year guaranteed deal, is if he got a promise that he's the next coach of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the only thing that makes sense. Like, look, does it make sense that he didn't like criticism? Sure. That here's a guy that, you know, back when they were players, Tony Romo got all the heat and he got all the praise. And now Tony Romo gets all the praise and he gets, yeah, some of that. And I'm sure some of it isn't fun when, you know, you want to be out there playing and you don't have it fully out of your system. Like, I get all that. But the Cowboys, had they built up Blake Jarwin. They're probably going to draft a tight end. Like, look, he, he raced a pregnant woman two years ago and came in third. He, he was not running particularly well. So the idea that it's simply because he missed football and wants to get back on a football field and wants to be in that locker room, like, okay, okay. You don't want to be a shell of your former self. You're more likely to get hurt as well as being effective as, as you know, we're all – Joy's rightfully, like anybody else, questioning what he has left in the tank. To me, the only possible reasonable explanation for, dude, you don't give up that job. Don't ever make them fire you. If you die in that chair, great. That's a life well lived. The only thing that makes sense is if Jerry, who has done this before, he tried to put it in place for John Gruden, is if Jerry said, you're my guy. You're my guy. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.